Hey guys, all right, back with another Bow Daily Recap. It is December 27th, 2018, and today we're going to discuss in this video, Bow talks about how to determine if a stock is a long or a short. He goes into trading the ticker symbol WATT, W-A-T-T, and he talks about how he traded the front side long until the resistance points. And then third, knowing when to stop trading. This is very key. All right, let's get into it. All right, welcome guys. Today is uh, Thursday, December 27, 2018. Welcome to Daily Recap. Well, today was a pretty, pretty, pretty crazy day in Watt. There's Watt again. Here's the 750 line. Let's see if it breaks it, and it breaks it. See that? Crazy, right, guys? See how the charts work? Now it's probably going to go to eight bucks, but we'll see. But let's uh, let's take a look at what 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 I did for what, okay? W A T T, and how I determined that this was in fact a long and not a short. Look at that; it's decimating shorts right now, killing the shorts. It's going from line to line. So this is what happened when I woke up this morning. Should I actually have a long in the stock <laughs> on the 750 break, guys? Let me just put it in my order real quick here. Where should I sell this sucker? I want to sell it at 787. Okay. Um, so when I woke up this morning, I see, whoa, Watt and Plug are both running. So these two stocks here, right? So in the beginning of the day, Watt didn't have much volume. There's hardly any volume here, pre-market. And it probably had like 90,000 shares. That's it. It was under, it was under 100,000 shares. So it was setting up, man. It was setting up. Let's take a look at what it looks like on the long-term scale. So let's let's put right here, um, what, and we'll change this to ten days. Okay. Making sure I'm leaving my want open. Okay. What's there to say on this? This is crazy, man. Look, 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 look at this stock. It's just freaking killing everybody. It's killing everybody. How did I know that this was a long? I was pretty damn sure because in the past, I played this and I got my ass kicked. <laughs> Watt always ran more than I thought it ever ran. So this is where experience comes in as well. And I know that Watt is like, dude, if you wait, it always conforms to a chart. The chart just looks like wacky. It looks like there's no way it can reach that line, but it reaches it pretty much every time, man. It's just crazy. It's, it's like super extended all the time. So let's take a look at this again. So this is what we're working with here. We came all the way back. I mean, uh, how more, much more can I show you this? It's just, it's just crazy, right? And so when I woke up, this is what I looked at. So this is the same process, guys. I, I go on every stock that I do, right? So I wake up and I see what's on my scanner. So I wake up, I see what's on my scanner. First thing I do is I look at the news and read what the heck is going on. I go to Finvis, it's the same thing for every daily recap, guys. It's the same process, it's like a golf guy, right? It's like you, you set up each day, you have the same process, same routine. It's robotic almost. And so this, my automatic reaction is, okay, let's see what the news is. Let's see what the filing is. Let's see what the chart is. So the first thing I look at is, well, here's the short. It's like, dude, there's a huge short float. First of all, a third of the float is shorted. Right or wrong, I mean, we don't know what it is, right? I mean, this is, like, this is just, like, just an estimate that the site did. You can't really tell. You can't really tell. Um, what, what it is. And let, and, I mean, you can tell every, probably every month or whatever that DTC like gets the shares, but these numbers are all like, who knows whether it's a short or, or a long, right? It's just, and so, but the, the, the main thing is there's 25% institutional owned. So the float is actually a lot smaller than it is. So that's what, that's the whole thing when you're looking at this, right? So you don't really understand like the short float and how much is really, what's exact. You don't need to know the exact. You just need to know that, hey, it's less than what you think it is. So the 19 million is less by 24%. So I'm just doing a rough estimate. This is the worst case possible, right guys? 
So 25%, so it only leads uh, three fourths of this. So divided by four, let me see. Uh, so it's 15 million left. And of 15 million, 33% is short. So 10 million. I'm just, you know, I'm just, I'm just guesstimating, right, guys? Just guesstimating because you don't need the exact. You just need to have – so the, I always say you need to paint the picture of what you trade, okay? And so the picture I'm painting is now – it's actually around the 10 million float. Now, let's take a look what the volume is now. It's 16 million. It's been, it's been rotated, man. Let's see what the news is. Announces – News could be anything. And actually, like, when I read this, is like fluff as hell. <laughs> okay, it, it did some approval for some first, I don't really give a damn. That's not the important thing, right? You know what the important thing I'm looking at is this, guys. I'm looking at this. This is what I'm looking at. This sucker has been going down every freaking day for months, months, months. And this is like, dude, it gapped up big and held big. So in the morning, what it did was this. This is what I know. That's like, holy crap. It gapped up and it held. Not much volume. There was not much volume at all. It was kind of like, omnim it was kind of like eerie almost. It was like, there's something setting up, man. Something, something is setting up. And so then I'm looking at the filings next, right? I always look at the filings. A lot of people pointed this out to me. They go, oh, that's a big effective. Um, there's an S3 shelf way back in August, like four months ago, way back in August. 75 million bucks. But then I, I so I was telling uh, Alex, I was like, dude, this sucker has been going down every day since $12. So if you take a look at six months ago, In August, it was like a fourteen dollars, dude, fourteen and twelve. So they sold that son of a bitch down every day, practically every day for four months. They killed it from twelve to fourteen dollars to four dollars. So they have. So now today was the first time it popped up. People are probably thinking, "Oh, they have a big old effective shelf. They're gonna sell into it." Well, guess what, guys. My theory, my thesis is they already sold. They're out. And so now there's no one else selling. So everyone's a bag holder right now. The only ones that are selling are bag holders. And so this is the bag holder theory. This is the gap fill bag holder theory. If something's down this much, who, who's left to sell? The guys that are holding it from $8 to 4 bucks. they're in it for like, they're in it for the, their lifetime. They're like, fuck, I'm already fucking stuck. I'm in it. Whoever wanted to be out during this one year period is fucking out, dude. You can't just hold from eight bucks, 15 bucks down to five bucks and not want to sell. If you're going to sell, you're going to fucking sell. If this thing starts to move and if you're holding it from eight bucks, you may be actually adding. So you, you might be adding to your bag, averaging down. This thing went down so much without a relief rally. So that was my guess. My, that was my thesis for this. And based upon what I, I understand in the past, and it kicked my butt because I always thought, hey, man, there's no way this thing could go up. You know? So a combination of that, I realized, dude, this thing, this thing could be very explosive. Um, let's take a look what it did. Uh, so let's go back, drill down even more to like the one month. So I'm drilling down where it could potentially run to. I want to see what the cap is, right? And so we, we talked about the 750 line pre-market, guys, pre-market. How did I come upon this line? Very simple here. I pulled up. I, I started zooming. All I do is this, guys. I'm going from one year and keep drilling it down until I see something, something that's, that, like, that, that shows me a line. So that's why I call it a line. Okay, I, I call it a line because it's visually a line. It's like where the ceiling is, where the roof. So a ceiling, I can call it like the ceiling of your house. Take a look upstairs. That's the ceiling. So I, I, I'm trying to look for that ceiling. 
So I keep zooming down from a year, you know. So if I zoom down to six months, eight bucks. It seems pretty obvious, eight dollars. But I'm like, dude, the stock was like six dollars. How can it go up two bucks? It can, and it did. It's doing it right now. You see what I'm saying? So the ultimate ceiling is eight bucks. I would want to short the shit out of this at eight bucks. But before it hits eight bucks, there's a bunch of lines within the lines, right, guys? So you go from month to month into trying to find clues as to where the lines are. You can use better charting. I'm just using this as a quick reference. So I drilled all the way down to one month. And there's where I saw the 750 right here. We look very carefully. This is, this is what I saw 750. There's lines all over the place. Don't get me wrong, dude. There's lines all over the place. But this bar here, this candle bar, or this bar, whatever you want to call it, it hit at 750. And then from there, see, it, it went down and it tried to bounce to 750s. And then it went, went down. All these could have been a resistance line. But I'm just looking for some clue. And, and hey, man, you call it luck, you call it whatever, but it worked out. 750 was the line. And so all I did was this, guys. Let me pull up what I did. I actually annotated this, which I rarely do, but let me uh, bring this up for you.